Welcome to Mainland, your local regional television station. I'm Graham O'Brien and some of the stories coming up in today's news. Donators reach target, union and police face off in Nelson, deceased woman named and more. The weekend was one of action for First Union at our local supermarkets. First Union was taking action over the pay disparity between North and South Island stores with workers being paid $2 or less an hour with the reason given by management that we are in the South Island. The situation got a little tense when union organisers tried to enter the stores using their rights as a union to meet with their members. However, store owners and police had a different idea, with two of the out-of-town organisers being arrested outside New World in Nelson and then in Richmond's Pack and Save. To give us more detail on this action is First Union National Organiser Bill Bradford. Hey Bill, um, it, was, it was pretty uh, busy for you on the weekend. Um, just for the viewers, this isn't the first time that you've been um, to see Pack and Save, is it? No, not, not at all. Um, we first went in there towards the end of last year and signed a lot of the workers up there as members of the union. Uh, we initiated bargaining for a collective agreement with them. Um, we've been in, we go in regularly, our local organiser goes into that store regularly. Um, we actually began bargaining with the company. Um, bargaining's got to take place in what's known as good faith from both parties. The problem we've had when we've tried to bargain with them um, is that they go through the motions, they pretend to bargain, they do what we call surface bargaining, <laughs> where they go along and nod their head to go away in a June and come back and, and give you nothing. Uh, in particular, the foodstuffs in the South Island, the pack and saves in the New Worlds, they refuse to bargain over wages. Yeah. Now you can't possibly bargain in good faith for a collective employment agreement um, if you're not going to talk about wages. No, um, no. So it's a farce that they go through, uh, um, and they've been getting away with doing that for, you know, for a long time. Um, but certainly, yeah, that there was no excuse for their denying us um, um, entry in those stores on Saturday. Yeah, well, that's that's my next question. So the, the law allows a, a union delegate to go in to meet with the, the members, and that's the law that you were... You were exactly. That was the law that we were, we were using. There had been many precedents set in court. Uh, um, what the police were doing was they were taking advice from the owners and the owners' um, advocate who um, was basically saying, trespass them and throw them in a cell, <laughs> uh, um, in, in flash words, of course. <laughs> uh, um, we were arguing about the present, we were arguing the points of law. So twice, the first time in, um, uh, um, at the Nelson New World, um, uh, um, one of my other organisers and myself were uh, um, arrested, um, held for a while, and then uh, I released the trespass order against us. We then went out to Richmond, uh, pack and save, um, and there we were, uh, again, uh, um, quoted the Employment Relations Act, again they threw us um, uh, um, in jail um, and not appear in court uh, tomorrow over, with some charges over that. But the following day, they realised by then with enough pressure, they must have realised they're wrong. The employer's advocate from food stuff changed his advice to the owners and the owners changed their advice to the police and so they let the organisers in on Sunday. Wow. So the whole thing is, uh, I mean, man, my boss, the secretary of our union, was trying to contact the police and say, you know, you've got to follow the law. Uh, um, he couldn't get any. He couldn't get anybody. He couldn't get anybody to respond to him, and yet, and yet, the foodstuffs advocate, who's not a lawyer, uh, um, was able to basically instruct the, the police through those uh, um, through those door owners. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit scary, really, isn't it? Mm. I mean, the law is the law. Yeah, well, uh, exactly. I mean, uh, I mean. I can understand in a small town where the police said to us, we're not really that familiar with that employment law, um, but I would expect them to go and look it up and find out a bit about it. Uh, um, and we've had, I've had stores in other places where the police have said the same thing and they pulled out their pad and look up the Employment Relations Act and there it is. Yeah. You know, that's all they had to do. <laughs> uh, um, instead, they just totally struck the deep uh, uh, and did what the store owner wanted them to do. Sure. And um, actions, I know, uh, actions around the country, how's it, how's it going? Well, in terms of the uh, food stuff, yeah. look, in the North Island, we, we have collective agreements. I've, got, I've, I've initiated and bargained for and, and gained um, more than uh, uh, 20 collective agreements with North Island, Pack and Saves and New Worlds. Yeah. We've had a, a, a little bit of trouble along the way getting some of them. There's been a, you know, a bit of push and shove. Um, but what we've come up against here in the South Island um, is some fairly ridiculous stuff. Um, and ju just that refusal to engage in any meaningful way, as I said, refusal to talk about uh, to talk about money. A lot of in places like the Richmond Pack and Save, there's a lot of intimidation of workers taking place, uh, um, and uh, you know that's a problem because workers will come to us and say, you know, we've been bullied over our union membership, but of course they're not going to let us use their name 
yeah. um, to take an illegal case because if you're being intimidated, well, of course, you're frightened. Yeah. <laughs> so sure. that's the nature of intimidation. So, you know, these are, some very, from our point of view, um, some fairly out of control um, owners. The food stuff group, of course, says, oh, these are just individual owners. We can't, we can't stop them. It's up to them. But I'll guarantee if the pack and save owner tried to paint his store red, they could interfere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sure. so it's a bit of a, it's a bit farcical too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Bill, thanks very much for your time and, and good luck on the on behalf of the low, lowest paid workers around. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. I spoke to Rachel Boyag of First Union outside New World before I found myself being the centre of police attention. Rach, last time we talked to you, you said you're going to have some action down here and you're going to have the big rat. It's certainly big enough. Um, seems like you've caught a few people on the hop here. Can you tell us what's going on? Yeah, so we're down here today because New World workers are paid around $2 an hour less than their countdown counterparts across the road. Uh, and the police here have just attempted to block us from entering the store. Um, they've been instructed to do so by the occupier, uh, whose name, the owner of the store, is Greg Guy. So Greg Guy has asked the police uh, to stop us from coming on site. Um, that's actually unlawful. We're entitled as union organisers to access a work site for the purposes of meeting with members, um, seeking compliance with minimum standards of employment, seeking compliance with health and safety, communicating with members. So we were just going on site to give some of the uh, flyers to the members. Uh, and so we've got a few of us here. Um, they they said that if, that if I went on site that I'd be potentially up, to, up for an arrest, which would also be an illegal action. Uh, so the cops have just been, um, I guess, checking the facts, which is always a good thing to do before you come down and, and, and try and do this. Uh, but actually the real issue isn't actually about us as the organisers. The real issues around the workers inside, many of whom have been threatened um, if, if they were to join the union. There was a lot of bullying um, from some of the management here um, who encouraged the workers to not join the union. And that's because this owner makes a lot of money, a lot of money, millions of dollars and he pays his workers either minimum wage or close to it. And that's actually at the heart of this issue, is that the workers at the store have the right to be able to feed their family, pay their rent, put fuel in the car, participate in society. Uh, and so we've got our big rat down here, we've got lots of supporters, um, and we'll be here making a stand today and tomorrow. And if we need to do it, we'll keep doing it until the owner actually listens to his workers and listens to the union and treats the union with respect and bargains in good faith. Right, so the, um, the morning half of this action proved um, quite exciting. How's this, the second half has uh, been more than that, really? Can you tell us a bit more about what's going on? Yeah, so look, the, uh, the boss here has um, instructed the police, I don't know quite why the police work for the boss, but obviously they do, uh, to arrest two of our union organisers. So once again, it's an unlawful... Uh, a lawful arrest. Um, union organisers have um, access rights under the Employment Relations Act and, and there's a lot of case law to support our right um, to go on site. But what's more concerning is that the workers themselves have been told that if they come out and join us that they will be protested from their own, uh, trespass sorry, from their own work site. So the young workers are down here um, who, you know, want to see a pay rise have been told that they would be trespassed from their own worksite. Now that's really bizarre, I've got no idea what kind of case law they're relying on to do that. Uh, and so we've got quite a few issues we're going to have to take up with Pack and Save, but look, we've got the community support, we're getting lots of toots, lots of questions about what's going on. Um, lots of customers are concerned around the fact that these workers are paid a lot less than countdown workers and there's no, no rhyme or reason for that. Cool. And um, are you going to um, go to court and fight some of this and, and actually get some sort of clear direction on, on what the police are doing here? That could be useful. We'll have to look at all of those options. Actually, what we found is that the best way to uh, uh, get the outcome we want is to continue organising on the ground, and it's uh, it's the community who will who will help us with that. The community sending a message to these owners that actually they need to stop being so greedy, share some of their profits with the workers, uh, and, and that's the way that we actually get the outcome. Um, but look, definitely, I'm sure our lawyers will be interested in looking at, at what options might be available for us. It's all happening here on Waimea Road at, at around midday lunchtime. We've had a bit of an incident where driver inattention seems to have caused a three car collision. One of those cars, or two of those cars, appear to have been parked. It seems a driver has strayed over to the left hand side of the road and collided with some parked vehicles, causing a concertina effect, I'm afraid. Of course, this has slowed traffic right down. Um, 
but on the whole, with the uh, amount of police that we've got here, it all seems under control and all in hand. But uh, it makes you realise that it's a very easy thing to just suddenly have your attention drawn away and uh, these things do happen. So remember, when you're out there driving, keep your eyes on the road. Now some police have identified a woman who was found dead at the Marlow Street Stoke address last Thursday. She is named as Tracy Ann Harris, aged 43. A post-mortem examination was completed on Friday and police hope to complete the scene examination at the address early this week. No further information is currently available. Now some City Council's Woodburn have planned change and their Woodburn survey ends this week on Wednesday the 17th of February. The council is considering only allowing ultra-low emission burners that are priced around $10,000 to be approved in Airshed C and B2, which is Adify, the Brook areas and in Stoke. The latest Liv Nelson carried a photo of very smoky Waimea Victory Airshed, which seemed to suggest that this is a norm for this area. I asked Nelson Hospital how they felt about in Nelson City Council photo depicting them as a bad polluter in the community. Media spokesperson Stephanie Gray replied with a no comment. However, she did say that the chimney had scrubbers put on their coal-fired burner back in 2012. Council Media spokesperson Paul Shattock sent a reply to our queries, stating that the image was one of the stock images that were in Council's photo library and that there was no intention to convey bias on this issue. Many who have replaced their wood-burning fireplaces with air pumps in the city will know that the, the cost of running these appliances in the coldest month is a costly exercise that some can't afford, leaving an increase in health issues in the community. So now with open fires gone and residents not burning coal, and if council allows affordable, nationally approved, low emission wood burners, why would we see air quality slip to the bad old days again? So to have your say, please go to the council website or visit council offices by Wednesday. A target of $2 million to buy a piece of paradise was achieved last Friday after pledges from around 34,000 people left the Give a Little campaign to go into mission stealth, so that donations made over and above the target were made unknown. This was so that the campaign organisers could prepare their tender in secret in a bid to buy a piece of Golden Bay coastline. Now that this part of the campaign to buy the Aroa property has closed, the Christchurch-based organisers had this to say. Hi everyone, Kia ora. this is our news for tonight, great to see you. Lincoln's up north today, but we're saying hi on his behalf. <laughs> He's still got his cap on by the way. Alright, so <laughs> nice work. We're, we're very pleased to announce, uh, obviously we're in stealth mode still, but we are able to still, and you are able to still see the pledges on the Give Little page. They've gone up to 37,811 pledges. So since Friday that's actually an increase of 3,059 pledges. Boom! Amazing. Fantastic. Thank you so much and welcome along and I hope you get to enjoy these beautiful photos that we've got for everyone. A win or lose, that's going to go to everyone to, re to remember this special uh, thing. Yeah. Now I've got some comments. Celia, my second bid, hope we get over the line. Good luck for Tuesday. Uh, Marion, this is a wonderful opportunity to compete to complete this iconic New Zealand National Park. Definitely. Uh, guest donor, what a wonderful way to unite New Zealand. Hasn't it been amazing? And yeah. as the old saying goes, can we do it? Yes, we can. And there's one more. The Able Tasman is one of those beautiful places on earth. I'm happily giving to this little giving a little to this wonderful cause. So yeah, we just couldn't yeah. agree more and thank you for pitching in with those little comments as well as some yeah. pleasures. It's really humbling. So, he tangata, he tangata, he tangata. Hey, I was talking to a, a dude today, um, hope he doesn't mind mentioning his name, is Richard Hansen, he's a, he's a pilot. I was gonna get him on video, but I forgot. But um, he actually gathered around with his kids on the computer and the family did the pledge that they made together and helped uh, decide how much it was worth. And I just thought that was a real treat. And that was the kind of things that we kind of hoped might happen uh, as this got picking up speed. So yeah, good on you, mate. I think that's awesome. And there was a photo that you may have seen on Facebook uh, of the Raglan crew. Uh, I, I just thought it was special. They just picked up on the idea of the, the card and just did it themselves. And they've been having a lot of fun, a lot of bands are around that. So I think that's really special. Sure. Brilliant, boom. Also, a uh, huge shout out to Beth Hutt and the crew at uh, All Press for setting up their coffee cart out in Sunday yesterday and um, it was really well supported. Heaps good. And again, just doing something out of the goodness of their heart to help, help the campaign, which is brilliant. And a shout out also to the man behind the camera tonight, Aaron. We got him out of bed to do this. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> right, full right. circle. Yeah, full circle. So, 
uh, it's a pretty much six weeks since we had the dream. We started the dream on Christmas Day, um, and we feel like we've kind of come full circle. Here we are, um, a day to go pretty much, yeah. and um, it's going to be a big couple of days actually coming up. But uh, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of surreal. It is surreal. To be here tonight. <laughs> Kind of yeah. pitch, kind of <laughs> pitching ourselves at, at all this so yeah thank yeah. you for everyone but we do have one more big hurdle we've got uh so i can't be blowed can't be waiting how many hours we've got like 15 15 hours to go yeah. um so if we could just invite everyone to uh, participate to join the party and uh we want to have fun and people to, to join in and get yep. that experience yeah, these comments were saying yeah. and a little bit of extra a little bit in the kitty to help uh help that tender that'll be really awesome as well yeah. so yeah. uh it would be cool i was thinking if we could make it to forty thousand. i thought that'd be real mint but also we also are very aware just particularly today and just even then add sharing some stories that people were in touch with some very Sadness, obviously earthquake related, but also yeah. some great sadness related to some health issues for a lot of people. So uh, we just um, we are cognizant of um, the fact that yeah, life isn't as sweet and dandy for as many yeah. people at the moment. That's so right. we do hope that this brings a little bit of um, bit of sparkle, bit of shine to to everyone's day. So yeah. yeah, let's do have fun, but look after each other. Yeah. Um, over the next 48 hours, thought we'd give you an insight. I'm going to be talking to lawyers. I've got a, a lawyer called Jeffrey Harley. He's helped me doing up all the little documents and bits and pieces. Good job. And then there's also um, the, the CEO of Harcourts, Chris Kennedy, is just helping out on just the negotiations. Sort of thing. So I feel like I've got the, the, the pros because you do get a little bit emotionally attached with purchases, you know. Yeah. So um, I'm, it's great to have these cool heads yeah, right yeah, there. Exactly. Very, very good. So we'll keep you posted. And of course, four o'clock Tuesday is when the tender goes in. And then we could wait up to five days, even. Yeah. It's a crazy thing, yeah. these pretenders. But anyway, so um, basically, we're just going to say thank you to everyone. Yeah. So yeah. thank you so much for following us. And yeah, we're missing Lincoln tonight. Thank you, Lincoln, for just being here with us in spirit and holding that ball up. And um, yeah, let's sign off. And we'll yeah. see you tomorrow. And let's sort of. Uh, do this thing it's by three o'clock tomorrow. It's have fun. Thanks for all your support, everyone. Cheers. Thank Bye. you. Nelson School of Music's Take a Seat fundraising got off to a great start with pledges from Nelson's Opera in the Park event goers for 50 seats received towards a 6.4 million re-strengthening project. Mayor Reese said that the City Council was pleased to be able to support this further fundraising campaign as part of Opera in the Park after committing $3 million towards re-strengthening work. The weekend's opera in the park attracted one of its larger crowds to date on Saturday night, making the most of the night filled with world-class music followed by a firework finale. Mayor Rachel Reese said the large crowd confirmed the event as one of Nelson's most popular with accommodation in the city centre booked out over the weekend. She said as Mayor of Nelson she was proud to see the continued success of opera in the park as a council-run event. Musical director Pete Rainey said the night was one of the best yet. We leave you now with a taste of Nelson's Opera in the Park. Break, we'll bring you the latest weather update and some events and happenings coming up from around the region. Are you looking for a scooter, walker, wheelchair, baby seats or push chairs? Then come in and see the Nelson Region Specialist at Mobility for You, 269 Queen Street, Richmond, opposite the library. We have a huge selection of scooters, walkers, wheelchairs and accessories, along with a free booklet guide. We also provide a breakdown service if you ever get a puncher or a flat battery we have fully equipped service vans to rescue you. Hi, I'm Robin Jordan and I invite you to call in and see the friendly team at Mobility for You, 269 Queen Street, Richmond, opposite the library.
Welcome, me hearties, to Smuggler's Pub and Cafe. Famous for hearty meals, craft owls, and a friendly service way. Sensational seasonal menus with meals all day and evening too. Or sell in for a snack with special menus for young smugglers and you. Settle in for a jolly old time. Relax and enjoy our award-winning dining and lovely fine wine. Decked out in an old worldly way, we're open seven days. Book or come on in to 8 Muratai Street, not far from a beach walk or swim. Phone 5464-08. We're the team at JCAR, right here in Nelson, 120 Hardy Street. Our shop is full of electronic items, including security alarm systems, electronic components, solar and power, electronics toys, sound systems, cables and much, much more. Jacob. 120 Hardy Street, Nelson. Why would you want to pay as much as $1,000 for a single bed mattress when you can buy a high quality locally made mattress like this for as little as $220? And a queen size mattress could cost you in excess of $3,000, but at Nelson Beds you could have a mattress like this as low as $425. So why would you go out and spend a fortune on your child's bedroom when you can come to Nelson Beds and buy a complete single mattress and base set, a 7 drawer scotch chest, a headboard and a 3 drawer bedside cabinet for as little as $979? So call and discuss our custom manufacturing options and local after sales service at Nelson Beds, Nelson's only bedding manufacturer. Victory 60 Plus is on Tuesdays at 1.30 through to 3.30pm at 238 Upper Vanguard Street. You can join in for cards, games and a cuppa. On behalf of the team here at Mainland Television News, thank you for joining us and we'll bring you the latest news and events from around the region again tomorrow. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air. G'day, it's your old mate the Mad Butcher and you're watching Mainland TV. Welcome to Smugglers Pub and Cafe, open seven days a week with free parking all day. Our lunch menus have that fat old fashioned flavour where we treat you like treasure with the food you'll savour. We cater for children, grannies and granddads too, with special rates and privileges given to the elderly lunchtime crew. Our staff are friendly and kind and want to see you all come back time after time. Daytime or evening, it doesn't matter, give us a call on 546-4084 and we'll be happy to spoil you. World War I was a defining period in our history, impacting greatly on the lives of people from the Nelson province. Memories of the First World War is an exhibition which will be displayed in a number of regional venues and is currently on at the Nelson Provincial Museum. Nelson Tire Centre. Great prices, great service. Buy your own Bryford trailer. All types, all sizes. See Colin Douglas for your tires and batteries. Why would you want to pay as much as $1,000 for a single bed mattress when you can buy a high quality locally made mattress like this for as little as $220? And a queen size mattress could cost you in excess of $3,000, but at Nelson Beds you could have a mattress like this as low as $425. So why would you go out and spend a fortune on your child's bedroom when you can come to Nelson Beds and buy a complete single mattress and base set, a 7 drawer scotch chest, a headboard and a 3 drawer bedside cabinet for as little as $979? So call and discuss our custom manufacturing options and local after sales service at Nelson Beds, Nelson's only bedding manufacturer.
a defining period in our history, impacting greatly on the lives of people from the Nelson province. Memories of the First World War is an exhibition which will be displayed in a number of regional venues and is currently on at the Nelson Provincial Museum. <laughs> 